trying to decide between WordPress and Webflow, here are some reasons to choose one over the other. I'm Natalie Lucier, founder of Access Ally, which is a WordPress-based membership and course solution for scaling entrepreneurs. Let's get right into it. First, some context. I think it's really important when you're trying to decide between two different platforms or pieces of software, what is happening in the greater scheme of things. So WordPress powers over 40% of all websites on the web today, but that doesn't mean it's necessarily the best or the best option for you because there are always new things coming on the market and it's important not to discount them just because not everybody's using it yet. So Webflow is a private company. They have raised some funding rounds and and they have a lot of traction. There are millions of people who use or have an account on Webflow, and that's something to go on to. I think the biggest difference between Webflow and WordPress is truly the philosophy behind both. So WordPress is open source software, which means that it's run by a team of contributors to this open source software. It means it's also free for you to take and customize as a developer. So that means if ever, a company were to go out of business that runs WordPress, for example, you could take your code with you and you could expand it or hire someone to help you expand it from there. Not only that, but there is such a huge community of people contributing to WordPress through plugin development, theme development, all these other things that really makes it way more valuable. And I think that is where a lot of the magic of WordPress really comes in because WordPress is always evolving and is not something that is static. It's something that is going to continue to improve over time. Now, Webflow is more of a closed platform. It's not something that any contributor can come in and write code for. It is a platform that is really designed for a specific use case, and it is not something that you can extend either. So there are not tons of plugins you can install. All the things that you'll want to add to your Webflow site will have to be made through Webflow or through some custom coding, which may or may not be easy to do because it's such a new platform and there's not as many resources or people who who know how to write code specifically to integrate with Webflow. Another thing to think about is WordPress was originally designed as a content management system for blogging. And with that in mind, it has a database that is unlimited, which means you can have as many blog posts, as many pages, as many images or pieces of content as you want to have on your WordPress website and you're only really limited by your website's host. So that means that if you have enough space on your host, you can keep on growing and scaling. Webflow, on the other hand, has limits to how many pages you can have and also how many blog posts you could have on your website. And they will have you upgrade to more expensive plans if you reach those limits. So that's something to really keep in mind if you know that your business is going to grow and expand, as I think all of us want to happen, is that you may be penalized in terms of paying more as your business scales and grows, whereas WordPress never puts any limits on your growth. Now let's talk about the website building experience since that is what both of these platforms are known for. So Webflow gets an edge here because you can design really cool websites with animations and really design friendly, UX friendly websites without any code. So that means you can drag and drop in their visual builder and essentially style everything from fonts to colors and images and everything right inside of their builder. And that is really where Webflow, I think, outshines WordPress in a lot of ways. Now, that being said, you don't want to discount WordPress just because it is not built as a visual designer first type of platform. It has come a long way with its own block builder and with more and more WordPress builders on the marketplace, which really comes almost neck and neck with Webflow in this direction. But the thing is with WordPress, you may need a little bit of code to do exactly what you want, unless you are looking for a theme that already has everything that you like, where you just customize a couple couple of things on it. Now let's talk about simplicity versus complexity. So I do think that Webflow makes it easier or more simple to manage. You don't have additional plugins to upgrade every now and then. You don't have to do a ton of backups or maintenance because things are a lot more static on your website. You are pretty much 
building it, maybe updating it every now and then for content, and you're pretty much good to go. Whereas WordPress does have a maintenance element to it, and that's because it's constantly getting better. The themes, the plugins, the things that you're using are constantly iterating and getting better, and I think that does add management time to managing your website. But I think it's really worth it because it makes things more secure on your website, continues to push the envelope, and just improves the experience overall for yourself as well as for your website visitors. Now let's talk about hosting. So with Webflow, you are hosting on their platform, which is great because they have very fast servers. They use Amazon hosting and it's very scalable. Now with WordPress, you could host on pretty much any hosting provider that you want and your site speed will really depend on the host that you choose. So we highly recommend going with WP Engine or Kinsta, which are both top of the line hosts. And I'll put links below for those recommendations for website hosts for WordPress. Now, if you do have a great host, I really feel like site speed and security and loading across the world are really on par for both Webflow and WordPress. But if you are trying to save money, you could host on a much cheaper host for WordPress. And as long as you don't have too much traffic, it's a great way to save some money. Now let's talk about SEO or search engine optimization. So both platforms offer a lot of options for search engine optimization and Google will rank both types of websites. So you don't have to use this as a reason for choosing one or the other. There are tons of SEO plugins specifically for WordPress. So you do have a little bit more flexibility in choosing how you want to implement your search engine optimization strategy on WordPress. But Webflow has built in all the things that you would want inside of your website to track your titles and meta tags and everything that you need for SEO. Now, the biggest thing that makes WordPress a winner in my mind is truly the flexibility, the add-on functionality that you can have with plugins. So let's say you want to do gated content with where you have a membership that people pay for to have access to content. So right now, Webflow has memberships in beta, which means that it's not available to everyone who has Webflow. And if you wanted to create this kind of website, you just couldn't do it on Webflow right now unless you were in that beta program. Now, on the other hand, with WordPress, there are so many membership plugins to choose from, from free options to paid options that integrate with your email marketing system and all kinds of other things. And so that's why I highly recommend WordPress if you want to have gated content, membership area, online courses, or downloads, because you can truly do everything that you want from both free plugins to paid plugins that integrate with your email marketing system and so much more. There's so much more you can do using WordPress here. You can do gamification, you can do point systems, you can do quizzes, you can do progress tracking, and all of that is available using different types of plugins on WordPress that you would never be able to do on Webflow. And obviously, Access LA is one of those systems that lets you do that. Both platforms allow you to collaborate with teams on your website. So with Webflow, you can have multiple users, for example, a marketing team or a developer team that comes in and works on the website as they see fit within their jobs and their roles. And the same goes for WordPress. You can invite different users who have different permissions to have access to the different types of content on your site, whether they are editing the front end look and feel or just adding a blog post or a piece of content. So let's bottom line it now. So if you are looking for something that is cut edge that is maybe a little bit still experimental and that has really cool crisp designs, then I do think that Webflow is a great option for you to consider, especially if you want something that has no coding involved. Now, on the other hand, if you want to side with 40% of the web and keep using WordPress because you want the flexibility, the control and the add on functionality you can add over time as things continue to evolve and grow in the marketplace, I definitely think WordPress is a strong contender still to this day. And you also have to think about it. Webflow is a private company with funding. They are growing quickly. They're investing a lot and doing a lot to push the envelope. Now, WordPress is still growing a lot itself. And there are tons of people who support the WordPress ecosystem and tons of smaller companies that are benefiting from WordPress itself by hosting or creating plugins or themes and also agencies that do work in both platforms. So I highly recommend that, first of all, you decide what your goals are for your website, whether it is a static website, a dynamic website, something that you use to host courses and memberships, and also really decide how your approach is going to be for your website. Are you hiring someone to design it? Are you trying to do it yourself using a theme or a builder? Or are you going to use a Webflow option and start from there? Now leave a comment below. Let me know what your
your experiences with these two platforms. I really wanna know which one you're going with and why. Now, if you're wondering which productivity tool you should be using, watch my Asana versus ClickUp video to see which one we recommend for your use cases.